In this section, we're going to look at um, the metric units of measurement for weight and then for volume of liquids. So first of all, weight. In the metric system, we measure weight in grams. And, uh, and technically, it's not weight, it's mass. But um, for our purposes here, let's just think of grams as weight. And, um, and so we use grams, but we get to use the exact same prefixes that we used for length with meters, right? So we had kilometers, well, we have kilograms. We had centimeters, well, we have centigrams. So um, the prefixes are the same, and they, of course, mean the same thing. So in this first example, I want to convert 1,600 decagrams to kilograms. One thing to be careful of when you see um, decagrams or decigrams for that matter is you know you have these two free prefixes that both start with D. DA will always be the abbreviation for deca and then just a simple D um, will be deci. So that's how you can tell the difference between them. So we have 1600 decagrams. We want to convert to kilograms. Now the only Equivalence involving def decagrams that I have is that one decagram equals 10 grams. But then notice grams relate to everything, um, including kilograms. So we'll go ahead and do a unit conversion factor that takes us from decagrams to grams. And we can see that it's 10 grams is equal to one decagram. And now that we've eliminated the unit of decagrams, now we can concentrate on going from grams to kilograms. And so we know we need grams on bottom and we need kilograms on top. So the grams will cancel and we know one kilogram is 1000 grams. So the grams cancel out here. Now what we're left with here is we've got 1600 times 10 and then we have it divided by 1000. So um, you know simplify if you can and notice what we can do here. Remember if uh, numbers on top and bottom both end in zeros you can just start chopping zeros off. So I can take this zero away and this zero away by dividing both of them by 10. I could divide both the 1600 and the 100 by 100. All right, so these two zeros cancel with these two zeros. So when I've cleaned all this up, I actually don't have to do any difficult arithmetic at all. I end up with just 16 kilograms. All right, so our next example involves volume in the metric system. And so volume is measured, at least liquid volume is measured in liters. Okay. And again, all the same prefixes apply. So we want to convert 341.58 centiliters to kiloliters. So 341.58 centiliters. And we want to turn this into kiloliters. Well, centiliters relate to liters by saying that there are 100 centiliters in one liter. So 100 centiliters goes on bottom, so the centiliters will cancel. One liter goes on top. Okay, let me cancel out my centiliters. Those are now gone. Now I just have to worry about getting liters into kiloliters. And so I know that 1,000 liters, according to the equivalency up there, is one kiloliter. And so those liters cancel, and I'm left with the unit I want, which is kiloliters. And so what am I doing? I'm, uh, I've got only 341.58 up top. On bottom, I have 100 times 1,000. So the result of this is that I get 341.58 over... Well, there's a total of five zeros, so one followed by five zeros on bottom, kiloliters. 
And remember what dividing by powers of 10 does. It simply moves our decimal point back, right? So since there are five zeros in my power of 10 that I'm dividing by, I know that this decimal point needs to move back five places. So one, two, three, four, five. And anytime you, oops, excuse me. Anytime you, didn't mean to zoom that in. Anytime you jump an empty space there, we of course put a zero. And so our answer here is zero point zero zero three four one five eight kiloliters.